Welcome to Inside the Americas with me, Jeannie Godula. Here's what's coming up in today's show. More rain and flooding from tropical storm Harvey. We'll take a closer look at the real story behind some of the most sensational pictures circulating online. A new political crisis in Guatemala as the president's attempt to kick a UN official out of the country sparks protests. And seeing double, a little town in Brazil is home to 10 times the world's average of twins. A look at why on the way. But first, our number of the week, 240. Winds of 240 kilometers an hour, that's 150 miles, whipped through Texas with Hurricane Harvey. That's just 40 kilometers slower than Hurricane Katrina 12 years ago. The hurricane slowed to a tropical storm but made landfall a second time this week in Louisiana, but not without leaving most of Houston, Texas, underwater. Close to 10,000 people are now housed in emergency shelters. Now, since Harvey first hit, a series of incredible pictures have gone around, like this one of elderly residents in wheelchairs up to their waists in water. Catherine Bennett from our Observer's Desk has been taking a look at the many sensational pics circulating online, trying to separate the real from the fake, and she joins me now on the set. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Let's start first with this picture that went viral of a shark in the streets of Houston. Yes, so it supposedly shows a shark swimming in flooded waters on a freeway. Um, and the tweet has been retweeted over 83,000 times. The guy who posted the tweet wrote, believe it or not, well, we don't, and here's why. So what we did to verify the image, and what you can do as well, is you right-click on the image, you copy the image's URL, and then you paste it into Google Images. And then with the results that come up, you can scroll through, and we can see that this image was posted as long, as, as long ago as 2011, after Hurricane Irene. So one thing we do know for sure is that the photo wasn't taken in Houston and it's not recent. So then where exactly does it come from? Well, the shark, at least, in the photo is real. And it comes from a photographer for the National Geographic, Thomas Peshak. He took the photo in 2005 in South Africa. And his shot, you can see that his shot has simply been photoshopped mm -hmm. onto an image of a flooded freeway. Now, there were some more political posts on social media that went viral as well. Yes, so there were some photos shared on Facebook and on Twitter of Barack Obama serving food at a food shelter, at an emergency shelter, rather. And people who were sharing the photo said that he'd gone down to Texas over the weekend to help with the relief effort, unlike Donald Trump, who only managed to get down there on Tuesday. Of course, Obama hasn't gone down to Texas, and the photo actually dates from 2015. And then on the other side of the political spectrum, we're seeing more alt-right websites sharing a different image. And one site says that it shows Black Lives Matter demonstrators blocking the road and stopping emergency services from getting through to help victims of the disaster. Of course, that isn't true. And it's actually an image that was taken from a demonstration in Atlanta in 2016. So why do you think people are actually trying to share this fake news? Well, for the shark photo, the man who actually posted it is Scottish. Um, and he wrote a long blog post explaining why he'd done so, essentially saying that he was trolling America. Um, he said it was an experiment to see whether people would believe it or not. And he couldn't believe how much it had been picked up, especially because this is an old photo and it tends to be trotted out after almost every major flood. And then when it comes to the more political photos, the photos of Barack Obama and the Black Lives Matter activists, these are shared by people who are trying to push a political agenda, whether they realise that they're old photos or not. So in this kind of situation, whenever this happens, all you need to do is to verify before you retweet. All right. Thank you so much for that, Catherine Bennett from our Observer's Desk. And speaking of pictures, it's time now for our Inside the Americas Image of the Week. This is from a demonstration in Guatemala demanding the president, Jimmy Morales, resign. His attempts to expel a UN official investigating him for suspected corruption has sparked angry protests, as Sharon Gaffney explains. Protesters on the streets of the Guatemalan capital demanding the resignation of President Jimmy Morales, who's being investigated for suspected corruption. The problem the president has is not just the allegations against him and his family. He's a president who hasn't carried out his duties. The people of Guatemala are sick of so much poverty. 
Protests were organized in response to President Morales' attempts to expel a UN official who's leading an anti-corruption inquiry against him, ordering Ivan Velasquez Gomez to immediately leave the country. It is our duty to prevent unlawful, illegal and unconstitutional acts, such as those carried out by Commissioner Velasquez. He has overstepped his authority by interfering directly in the internal affairs of the Guatemalan state. Guatemala's top court quickly intervened to temporarily suspend the decision, but Morales claims it doesn't have the power to overrule him on matters of foreign policy. The move to expel Velasquez came days after the UN official said the president should be investigated over alleged illicit funding during his election campaign. The UN commission headed by Velasquez was instrumental in removing former Guatemalan president Otto Perez, who was forced to resign in 2015 after being investigated for corruption. Morales won the subsequent elections with pledges to fight corruption. The allegations against him now threaten to unleash a fresh wave of unrest and another institutional crisis in the Central American state. The president denies any wrongdoing. To Brazil now, where a sleepy southern town holds the curious record for having the most twins in the world, 10 times the global average. Theories abound as to why. Is it down to a genetic mutation reinforced over years of relative isolation? Or could something more sinister be afoot? Haxi Myers Belkin takes a look. The hills of Candido Godoy may look sleepy and unassuming, but this small Brazilian municipality is home to a fertility phenomenon. It has the highest concentration of twins in the world, a fact celebrated by its biannual Twins Festival. This year, the star attraction is the dual baptism of newborn twins, performed by two priests, themselves identical. Globally, on average, one pregnancy in a hundred results in two babies. But here, that shoots to ten in every hundred. All twins here are direct descendants of German immigrants. <laughs> and many still speak a German patois. One hundred years ago, the community started out with 17 sets of twins and has lived in virtual isolation ever since. I think it provides a message for the whole world. Here, we cherish life, we celebrate it. As to the why, theories abound. Some attribute the town's remarkable fertility to an alien invasion, while others are convinced there's something in the water. This is the reason behind all of our twins. Look how beautiful it is. I sent two little cups of this to a friend who was having trouble conceiving. She drank it and got pregnant with twins. Science has another explanation. The P52 gene significantly increases the likelihood of multiple births. Women in the Candido Godoy region are far more likely than others to carry it. In part, it seems, due to years of reproduction within a limited gene pool. But for this doctor, the mystery isn't entirely resolved. It's all about genetic isolation. But usually, those sorts of twins would be born with some sort of physical deformity. But we see none of that. It's a real question mark. One of his theories is unsettling. In the 60s, at the height of the twins boom, Nazi fugitive Josef Mengele lived in the region. As chief physician at Auschwitz concentration camp, he carried out extensive genetic experiments on twins. His job was to find a way to make women more fertile, producing more twins, with a focus on boys. We do not know if he did tests here, but we think he had a lab in the region. From special water to war criminals, explanations for the phenomenon are plentiful. But for the time being, the mystery of Candido Godoy remains just that. 
Well, we'll leave you now with another rare phenomena, this time from Chile. That's where you'll find the world's driest desert in beautiful bloom. Years of heavy rains in the Atacama Desert finally prompted the seeds of some 200 desert plants to grow. We'll leave you with that. Thank you so much for watching this Inside the America. See you again next week for all the news from north to south. Across Africa, presented by Georgia Calvin Smith. From North to South Africa, from Bamako to Nairobi, from Accra to Mogadishu. Bringing you all the political, economic, cultural and social news from Africa for a better insight into an ever-changing continent. Across Africa on Fosfancat and Fosfancat.com.